Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the podcast. I'm Stephen Rogers. I'm Andrew Chavon. You might t- need to take the mic a teeny bit away. <laughs> yeah, I could tell. drive through effect. <laughs> I could tell by your, your face. <laughs> yeah, because my ears are bleeding. <laughs> Can you tell by the blood dripping down the side of my head? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, so funny. Uh, everybody, I apologize for uh, my sound today. I'm on the the road, and uh, it, we just had to record remotely, and I have the worst microphone possible. Yeah, I know. I feel like you built it yourself with like <laughs> uh, like airplane parts or something. Like you're straight on a desert island and had to yeah. build a microphone. <laughs> Airport bathroom parts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a napkin and some uh, Purell. Crap. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> Crap. Yeah, it's poop. Oh man, I I want to uh, start this episode by uh, wishing a happy birthday to a special someone, uh, Mr. Andrew Chavone. Oh my God, thank you so much. You know, with anxiety, <laughs> it's hard to get this attention, and you know, I know. I was thinking about it the other day, though, or I was thinking about it today. A year ago, I was in Aruba. Oh my wow, birthday, that's my that's ex, right. And I'm having more fun today <laughs> than the whole Aruba trip. I'm having, I'm having like a like a like a, like a, like a uh, lot of fun this, uh, hey, this whole weekend you you like way more members of this birthday party yeah <laughs> right yeah you and me <laughs> oh man that's well, funny so we, we got fresh off the press anxiety here yes i had a delivery uh right when we started to record i had a phone call and i'm like i should get this it's been weird phone calls all day and uh and i a guy said doordash outside and i went outside and uh, my mom and dad ordered a birthday cake i guess from doordash i don't know why but they i don't know if they realized they ordered it from long island and i live in queens it's like a 45 minute commute and when I opened the door, the guy said, real far drive, real far drive, Sunrise Highway. And I don't, I don't know what Sunrise Highway is or what, but when I got back to uh, to the to the desk with the, with the package, it said Rockville Center, which is so far away. <laughs> Sunrise Highway, Rockville Center. Oh, my hey, God. And maybe I have, I have a feeling this is all warm. Maybe he's saying uh, he left at sunrise. <laughs> yeah. He was high on the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So let me open this. Uh, it says V on it. Uh, oh, I'll hold it up. So uh, there's uh, there's the address, everyone. Rockville Center. <laughs> <laughs> and then you were you said he was trying to get a bigger tip. I think he was trying to well, here's what here's what I saw. Your phone goes off. You go, oh, hold on a second. And I heard it on speaker, DoorDash. And uh, you left. I'm like, oh, he ordered himself food. And I, I ca- it happened at the wrong time. And that's embarrassing and funny. And then uh, you come back and it's a birthday cake. I'm like, oh, okay. They, they ordered a birthday cake for delivery, which you would have to plan ahead. DoorDash sounds like it was done today. And then, um, uh-huh. uh, sorry. And then, uh, I'm, whatever sound just happened uh, through me, but um, yeah, it's that those things in your microphone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but th- and then uh, you come back and you say that he had a long drive. I thought it was in the city. I didn't know he I, he left. I thought so too. Yeah, <laughs> but I th- I think he wanted a tip. I think so too. And I didn't, if I would have known that I would have walked out with my wallet, but uh, I literally just put on pants. I wasn't even wearing pants for the zoom. At the I knew it. I knew now it. I am. <laughs> now I have to. So I funny. Have, he might come back and kill me. So I gotta be dressed. Birthday spanks. <laughs> yeah. Talk about the opposite of a surprise. Um, or no, you'd be really surprised if you showed up with machete. Kill me. But, Time to uh, cut the cake. The cake smells really good, and I don't know why my parents uh, don't know how to use Google Maps, but I don't know. Well, I go to bakeries in New York. City did they, proper. Did they have the right county? 
I don't think so. I don't think they maybe they had the zip zip code backwards. <laughs> oh man. Maybe they were worried about the cake getting followed, so it came from farther away. Right, right. Yeah. Incognito. They want me tracking it down that I yeah, but I knew they were sending me a cake. So well, why travel and get cake somewhere else when they can get it from somewhere else to you? <laughs> yeah. <So far. laughs> right, right. Yeah. You know, such exotic cakes. Well, let me open up uh, one of these. I only got three left out of the seven cases. Wow, they're like your birthday candles. <laughs> You're blowing them out quickly. <laughs> yeah, they're coming fast. Oh, my God. Well, thank you for the birthday wishes. A lot of Patreons have reached out our, and uh, Panickers. Yeah. Because you, you gave it away on the on a bonus. So Well, I, I wanted... I'm not saying it's bad, yeah. Yeah, but here's the thing. One, I wanted to... I My main thing was I remember your birthday... Because uh, it's a month from mine. Yeah, so, yours is May 30th. My yeah. Uncle. So I, and I, and I'll say it here, even though it's not a uh, secret and, and, and bonus, most everyone else, I have to put them in my calendar, their birthday. You're the only one that's not oh, in. Oh, wow. You're the only one that's not in there because I can remember it. But I, so on that episode, I was like, I hope I'm right and took a stab that it was today you're you're yeah that's good man i hate i hate uh telling people it's my birthday but i do like giving clues i'm like yeah it's at the end of april and then you know by the time april 29th rolls around some people are like is it tomorrow (laughs) (laughs) i love i love the the idea of you leaving clues like the riddler (laughs) yeah that's what it's like that's what it's like oh my god I just had this wave of uh, guilt for this poor delivery guy. <laughs> smell the cake again. <laughs> smell like a day old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It smells. It smells like a warm Honda Civic. It smells like April 29th. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god! And it's so tiny too. I'm gonna try to open it. Uh, Please, we got to see this cake. Yeah, hold on. Uh, yeah, I cannot. I I don't know. I'm gonna have to call them after. This box is horrible. Oh my god. Okay. All right. So uh, here's the cake, everybody. It it doesn't say anything on it. Okay, it's blank, and it just has sprinkles on the side. Is that what I'm seeing? Okay, and then it's a flat top with of nothing. Yeah, it looks like the potential to put something there what existed. Maybe <laughs> it's literally blank. It looks like the starter cake. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it comes with frosting to uh put it on yourself. Put it on yourself, <laughs> yeah, later. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Maybe not. he ate the, the message on the way over here. Well, he had to camp for a couple of days on his way to get the cake to you. Maybe this was ordered on my uh, my previous birthday and uh, just got here. So it's a blank template. Yeah, it uh, says happy birthday uh, 2021. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you get that vaccine. <laughs> From Pfizer. <laughs> Oh man, that's so funny. Well, I, I gotta uh, I gotta tell you because you asked about the uh, yes the birthday hang last. Well, it wasn't a birthday hang for no. me at all, but <laughs> I was no, my unofficial birthday hang last night. <laughs> so <laughs> yesterday, uh, Joe List dropped his uh, new comedy special on YouTube. Uh, this year's material. Yeah, check it out if you haven't. And uh, check out the live. Okay, so let me let me world build this for you. So I did, I did a show with him on Monday with Grove, mm-hmm. um, and uh, we missed you there. Yeah, Thank you're you. out of town every time he does the Grove, <laughs> I am. which is pretty crazy. <laughs> um, and so uh, at at the Grove, we're, we're eating at the at a diner by nearby, and I go, uh, it's like me, him, and Sarah, and and Ronan, and and somebody else. 
and I go, uh, are you doing anything for your special? And he goes, uh, he goes, I'm, should I? And I go, yeah, it'd be fun. It premieres live. You know, maybe you should, I'll come over and we can eat pizza. And he goes, yeah, let's do something. This is on Monday. So then Thursday, he texts me, hey, uh, I think I'm going to have a big thing and a bunch of people and pizza and cake and stuff. And I go over at like 4 o'clock p.m. and we start smoking cigars in his backyard. Then uh, Sarah makes nachos. Sarah's sister comes over and brings cakes. And wow. uh, and I eat like a whole bag of uh, chips myself with, <laughs> with like there was also dipping queso. So this is now like five or six. And we watched the, the first Batman <laughs> from, from uh, Burton. That's oh, okay. It. Yeah, we watched that. I'm, I'm eating probably, like I said, a whole bag of chips, a whole basically uh, thing of salsa myself, a thing of like not or uh, queso. Then, then, like I said, Sarah brings the nachos out with, with sour cream and stuff. And I start eating those. Then Joe orders a pizza. And I start eating that. And then uh, this guy, Matt Wayne, comes over, brings cookies. I start eating those. So about like 8 p.m., I really I'm going to explode. I, I'm like so tired from all this food. And it's special is like an hour and a half away. <laughs> I, I'm like, I've never been that full in my life. And I was so hungry, too. I don't know why, because of the cigar. <laughs> oh, the cigar you can't do on an empty stomach. Yeah, it revved me up. It 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 revs you up and it can nauseate you and then you gotta it you gotta do it somewhat fall. Yeah, so I'm eating for like my own health. You know, I'm eating all these chips. <laughs> you're you're recovering. Yeah, right. Oh my god. So uh so around like eight PM, uh, Isabel comes over, uh Isabel Hagen and um Jason Canner comes over mm -hmm. and you know, uh I think he brings food too. Or maybe not. I think it just brings beer, but um and then like around uh eight thirty, Joe's like, I think Louie's gonna come. And I go, Louie? He's like, Yeah, Louis CK. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, no way he's coming over here. He's like, you know, celebrity or whatever. Yeah. Coming to Astoria from like wherever he lives. Well, that's where they filmed some of the movie. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And Joe was telling me that Lou Louie was like color correcting all day for, and they've been texting back and forth all day about color correction for their new movie. Oh, wow. So, uh, I think he threw in while they were texting about the movie, like, Oh, I'm having people over for my special. So I didn't think so like, sure enough, eight 30, the buzzer rings and he's like, Oh, he's here. And I'm like, he, who's here? <laughs> Louis CK walks in <laughs> and I'm like, so full from all that food. I, I feel like I'm hallucinating. It's insane. And he's sitting on the couch that we always sit on. He, he a, walked by my mom. <laughs> walked by your mom who uh, came in the, the cats. Yeah, we were, we were kind of joking because the garbage smelled. We were like, oh, I hope she's okay in there. I, I don't know if she. That's funny. I hope it's trash. I don't know. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um. So then. Uh, so we uh so then the special starts we you know we talk about the movie or what i don't know so then the special starts and there's a live chat that you can do while it's like live premiering like it was so cool like ever like um like it just scrolls really fast and then you could uh put money in to have your your comment that's going really fast be bigger and it says how much money you gave it's called a super comment which i didn't even know was a thing i didn't either so we so we all start doing that. We go, uh, you know, Joe, Joe sucks or something. You know, then it's all yeah. big. And uh, and Louis asking about it. He's like, "What's this? Uh, YouTube?" And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." You just write it in, and you know, he's like, "Oh, you can lever it. You can you can increase it or decrease it with this lever on the on the YouTube app." But I'm like, "Oh, I don't even know that." Okay, yeah, do that. So then we see like a thing pop up while we're all watching the comments on his TV. Says Louis C.K. five hundred bucks. He gave five hundred bucks just sitting on the couch. Oh my god! He didn't even send a message. He didn't know how to do it. <laughs> just said Louis C.K. five hundred bucks. Wow. 
yeah i was like holy crap i started freaking out because i gave like 10 <laughs> well uh the scales make sense so far <laughs> yeah, I, know. I know i'm like I, I turn at him i go you just gave 500 bucks holy crap i can't believe it i can't believe it. i can't believe that's possible <laughs> did you say this yeah what did he say he said oh yeah 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 i think he was like liking the praise yeah of course <laughs> He's like, I gotta hang around this Andrew guy more often. <laughs> he thinks five hundred bucks is a lot of money. <laughs> he donated it like it was nothing. He probably orders that that uh, cake you got today every every single day for dessert. <laughs> yeah, he probably orders it from. He probably orders like lobster from Boston and from DoorDash. Long drive. <laughs> Long drive. Yeah, sucks for you, man. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't. My God, well, that's awesome. Yeah. So then, uh, um, so then we're uh, like more. It starts and more. More super comments are coming up, and uh, like Sarah gives like three bucks, and uh, I think I gave another ten bucks, and I go, I say something, and then Louis like, oh, won't let me do anymore. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, the max I could do is five hundred, and then I'm locked out. He's like, I could have made five hundred ten dollar ones. <laughs> and I go, oh, yeah, that would have been awesome. <laughs> I go, yeah, five hundred ten dollar ones would have ruled, or a thousand five dollar ones. Yeah. Uh, and he, you know, so uh, it, it, like I said, his didn't even have a message. His went away. He got buried under all of them, and. Uh, and then we, uh, you know, chime in on the comments. Occasionally, people will be like, "Oh, that's a guy from the Tuesdays Live that bombed." And, and yeah, then somebody would be like, "But he's a good egg." <laughs> I'm like, "All right, there you go, there you go." So, uh, so then the special ends, and we're all still hanging out. You know, surprisingly, we're st I'm still no, actually, I stopped eating, but <laughs> everyone's still eating. That is surprising. <laughs> yeah, well, I couldn't fit any more food in. I was gonna explode. I'm surprised you didn't donated money. You're gonna you need it to get your stomach pumped. <laughs> yeah. And Joe kept looking over. He's like, "Are you drunk or something?" I'm like, "No, it's chips." Because my eyes were like halfway closed. <laughs> oh man. So, uh, so then like Joe gets some email from somebody at YouTube or something. And he said he's got a lot of good stuff for you when you when you do your debut because he talked to like some kind of C CEO of YouTube or something. Yeah. Who got all these like tips and stuff for him. Oh, I definitely need those. Yeah. So you gotta check in with him before next week. Uh April, May May sixth. Yep. May ninth. May May sixth. <laughs> and uh so then like he gets some email. So then like people are leaving, and now it's just me, Louie sarah joe and, and jason and um uh joe starts freaking out because he got some email about some ad or something i don't know like something was misspelled in some ad he did so he's like looking at his computer louis just standing up sarah is like on the computer and jason you know he's just doing you know being jason so i look at louis and i go louis i'm like oh you see any good movies lately and he goes <laughs> a lot <laughs> and then he starts going off on all the movies he saw oh really I mean, yeah he, the criterion and he likes rock hudson and he's, who was i guess closeted or something and i don't know he goes on and on and on about movies and i'm like yeah <laughs> and also uh you talked about he's like best friends with chris rock so you like yeah yeah chris oh rock. the slap the post slap life. And I'm like, well, I saw, I heard, uh, at least he's selling out the shows. He's like, they were sold out before the slap. Yeah. The news is trying to make it. So I'm like, oh, okay. So there's no silver lining at all for this, for, for Chris rock. And he goes, no, it's way worse for him now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I'm like, oh, well. he's like, yeah, the news will make you think things, you know? Oh, I wonder why he thinks that. Yeah, I wonder why too. 
they they're saying that he's doing a show in the Ukraine during the <laughs> yeah that's true during uh, the bombing and he was not yeah you should have been there uh, that been a great line <laughs> I didn't even think about that uh and, yeah and uh, a bunch of other stuff but uh other stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh yeah so uh yeah he told uh he told his so many stories i was like absorbing them all he told a story about he sat on the plane with uh, one of the olsen twins and oh my god i know and uh one of the flight attendants were kept asking him for his boarding pass <laughs> and he's like no oh, i'm my seat yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's funny and then he said like he was at uh lunch with Chris Rock after the slap and some woman came up and interrupted their lunch and just ignored Louie and, and looked at Chris and was like, you are so brave. <laughs> and Chris just has to be like, yeah, cool. I can get away from me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks. And another assault in public. <laughs> yeah, just, right. what I, just what I need. Just Someone not respecting break. my privacy. <laughs> get, get a break. Oh, man. But before the movie thing, I was like, ah, I don't know if I, uh, I think I'm bombing with this guy. I don't know. I'm like so full. And I'm like, my brain is like, I I'm so clogged with uh, nacho cheese, you know? <laughs> right. But I was able to clear it out right before the end. I think I made a good impression on him before the end. So. Oh, good. Because some of the times I'm like, you know, like it's pretty weird because just like a small group. But then he says something, Joe says something, and it's like, all right, it's my turn to say something. And I just say something stupid, you know? So I don't know. Well, you don't always have to say something. I know, but the pressure <laughs> to say something in these small groups, it's brutal. Right. Yeah, silence is is uh, deadly. Uh, I know, that's a Jason Cantor plan. He just silent and, you know, hides in a cupboard. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so I'm uh, I'm out here on the on the road. I'm I was in um, St. Louis yesterday. I'm in Cincinnati today, and uh, the uh, we get to the hotel yesterday, and uh, we check in. I'm about to record with you uh, for the bonus, and uh, I get to my hotel room and uh, I do the key. I try to open it locked I, I, and oh. i do the key again and i i push harder and it's locked i'm like oh god and i'm like i look and it's a handicap room okay and i'm like oh my god i'm waking up someone that's in a wheelchair right now they're you know it's like 4 a.m they're gonna i'm they're gonna have to crawl into their chair roll over some idiots waking them up trying to get into their room and I'm like freaking out. So I run down to the desk before anyone can open the door. And I'm like, I'm, I'm so sorry, but you guys gave me a key that uh, clearly someone's in that room. And the woman goes, uh, Oh, you have to turn, turn it up. And turn I go, up. I go, what? Turn it up. And she goes, I'll show you. Oh and my God. I'm, yeah, like, no, no. I'm like, no, just tell me what to do. And she's like, come with me. We go all the way up to my room uh, and she puts the key in and turns the handle up. Yeah. And just opens the door. And there was no one in there? No one in there. What were you hearing, though? Nobody. Oh, OK. But <clears throat> I all she meant was turn the handle up and push instead of an op regular opening of the door. She was missing one word. <laughs> All she had to say was handle. Turn yeah, the yeah. handle up. No, turn up. Turn up. Turn up for what? Up for what? <laughs> like, okay, thanks, uh, ludicrous. Yeah, it was ludicrous. It was ludicrous. <laughs> and I, I was a nervous. You know who needs those handicaps? Little John's. Uh, tiny Tim's. Little John's and Tiny Tim's. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> after uh after she told you the hotel instructions did you go burr, 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 burr. oh man <clears throat> can you hear me yeah okay 
Oh man, um, I just had this fear uh, that you're only recording me again because we did that bonus and you just recorded my face the whole time. I don't know how that happened because the second one didn't come out that way. Well, because I recorded that one and uploaded that one. No, even the oh, the, oh, the, the the short one you did the short one I oh, did. Thank God. Okay, thank God. Okay, so we're good. Yeah. Oh, thank so, God. I don't know why that happened, but anyways. You ever hear that Geraldo joke about the handicap bathroom? They they look at him at the desk and they go, "We got you the handicap bathroom." <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, thanks." <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so I, uh, I got to talk about the wedding. Yes. Officiated my first wedding. Uh, it, was, it was a living nightmare uh, getting ready for it. It was very anxiety inducing. Finally can talk about it. I know. How long have you been prepping for this? It feels like six months. I've known about it for, yeah, I think since you last your year. certificate in, in like... I feel like it was January. You got, you got mailed your certificate. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've known about it at least four or five months. And uh, get to uh, the rehearsal and uh, go to the rehearsal. This is what part of California again? Uh, Moore Park or something. It's it's north. It's a little west of L.A. And is it like a beach wedding or just in California? It's just outside in uh, on an orchard. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Go on. And uh, <laughs> uh, good world building. Good world. Uh, <laughs> picture this. Get to the rehearsal. And you, did you get your new suit? Everyone was asking about it. No, I didn't get to get the new suit uh, because uh, I just didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't decide on a color. I couldn't decide and uh, between green and pineapple and <laughs> all the Skittles colors. But a lot of people like the green. I know. I know. I'm outvoted here. Yeah, I think I'm going to do green. I just it wasn't going to be for that wedding. But I have so many more to go to uh, it, that I'll be able to use it. But anyways, I think we got we got some other. Uh, I think uh, Kelly Moran suggested some other ones. Yeah, there was some gray ones that people liked that. uh I uh oh yeah, yeah I'm open to but um get to the rehearsal and uh the wedding coordinator is like all right I'll show everybody how to line up and then Steve you can run us through everything that uh you're going to say uh -huh. and no one told me that I would be doing that and uh I had it ready but nowhere near ready in my opinion so oh we God. we do the lining up, we go over. I'm standing at the altar, and uh, she has them stand in front of me. So they're this close to my face, and, and you got to do the whole speech. That feels like it ruins the surprise. And I so I said that, and I'm like, I'm not going to do a lot of it because I want them to hear it for the first time. Yeah, that would and make she's sense. she's like, all right, just do the uh, the vows and the ring exchange. And uh, the problem with wedding Wait. is like you can uh, change it. So, and this is my first time officiating. So, I was Googling a bunch of wedding ceremonies. And I saw one thing that was happening a lot was sometimes vows were done at the same time as the ring exchange. So, that's how I did it. Oh, cool. And uh, the wedding coordinator was like, Yeah, that we're not doing that. <laughs> and I'm like, Okay, uh, then uh, I can't say what I have in front of me. And then she's like, all right, we'll just do. Just have him repeat the do the other repeating thing. And I go, oh, I got that over here. And she's she's like, no, no, no. And it's like with each thing, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm just doing so bad. And she she hates me oh, and God. I'm going to screw up. So I text. Kate, when I'm like, I have to work on this all night, and I <laughs> stressed about this for months. I, <laughs> I a, like cram like it's a final exam for yeah, college thing because I had everything, and and it turns out I I was doing fine, but like, and it was mi minor things, but still like I was worried I was gonna screw up, and this wedding coordinator 
pretty much confirmed that I was screwing <laughs> like some parts up. Oh, come on. And uh, <laughs> there's no official way. I'm there sure. isn't. But, uh, you know, she must have uh, saw it a different way. But I, I was <laughs> talking to the Brian and groom and they seem pretty happy. So I'm like, OK, it looks like it's going to be fine. Get to the wedding. Uh, me and Caitlin show up and I'm like a wreck. And uh, we, uh, you know, it's it was sort of it's it's the most stage fright I've ever had in my life. I walk his grandmother down the aisle and her and I, she's like her and I are cracking jokes the whole way down. I'm like, OK, this is helping. Yeah. And uh, bonding. I uh, bonding. I'm like, OK, I got a shot with her. And uh, <laughs> I get to the altar and then people start coming down do you cry at weddings um you know what sometimes uh i never think i will but then i sometimes tear up yeah especially uh when they're like looking at each other at the altar or even when the bride comes down you know, yeah get emotional yeah so my buddy comes down the aisle and uh I jokingly said under my breath because I had a lav mic on, but it wasn't on yet. Oh. Uh, but he's coming down the aisle towards me and I go, oh, my God, you're so beautiful. Like he was the my bride. That's so funny. <laughs> and uh, he's that, walking right toward you, right? You're standing he's, there. He's walking he's right like, towards me. Making eye contact. Yeah. Yeah. And then he stands next to me. The groomsmen come down separately from the bridesmaids and then they all line up. And they're and all looking at you too, I assume. They're all looking at me. So everyone's my one, you. <laughs> everyone's looking at me. And um, uh, is it just you standing there before everyone comes down, or is yeah, it other people? Just me standing there. Oh wow, it's a lot of and pressure. yes, well, it's like a stand-up show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like a stand-up show, but I refuse to speak. <laughs> yeah, I really build the anticipation. Just standing there. jokes. So. Uh, then she starts to come down and I see him get emotional. So then I get emotional. Yep. Uh, and it probably looked like I was mocking him. <laughs> I'm just doing it one second after him. Well, that's and, better than a priest. You know, they don't have any emotion. Yeah, that's true. And uh, just uh, scarves. And uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, they get in front of me. Oh, well. As she's about to come down the aisle, I I'm like, all right, everybody, please rise. And uh, yeah, and that's the first time I've ever had a a crowd rise uh, all at once. Usually they leave individually, but uh, yeah, right, right, <laughs> depending on the jokes, yeah. Um, so they're in front of me, and I'm like, all right, you may be seated. And then they, everyone sits like, this is crazy. Like, this is only from the movies. And uh, I have it memorized, but I go, uh, thanks, everybody, for being here. I'm paraphrasing everything, but thanks for being here. Uh, we're here to unite these two wonderful people. And I go, but we're going to keep this brief because weddings make me cry. Mm -hmm. And it gets a good laugh. And I see some people go, oh, like, this is going to be light. And I do some regular romantic stuff i i gotta tell you wedding crowds like we've talked about are the hottest crowds i've ever the it was audience. crazy yeah so they're all and they're captive they're all looking at you yeah and they're so, gassed up for laughs they're gassed up for emotions and laughs so i i gotta tell you my best joke of the uh please. of the ceremony please so i go um uh, like everyone here, these two mean a lot to me, and uh, it, I was truly honored and taken aback that they asked me to officiate. In fact, uh, I don't think anybody saw it coming because when they when I got off the phone with them, uh, my girlfriend said, "Did they ask us not to come?" And <laughs> that, and then I go, uh, but I was so nervous about messing this up that I messaged the couple quite a bit. Uh, asking them a lot of questions and i want to share with you guys some beautiful things that they said uh, that really touched me and i go and this is something chelsea said and it was something along the lines of uh i believe in always choosing love and uh as i build a family with Corey, i think we will uh 
ground a, a good uh, relationship of communication about it's like you know something and she goes i believe we can always choose love and i go that's that's really something and i go and here's what uh cory sent me uh, i met chelsea at work <laughs> oh, <And man. laughs> crushed destroys brian brings the house down kills 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 and i go uh so we see who will be writing the thank you notes oh man and when i did Good that tag. when i did that i was like oh well, i i got this crowd right, right here right, right the phone and the right. best kind of laugh is like that laugh after you kind of get emotional you yeah know? yeah like that's uh that's like a slingshot of a laugh you know? yeah like yeah reading the bride's uh yeah yeah, 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 back. yeah and then when you say they met at work you just let it fly <laughs> that's funny yeah yeah, it feels good to laugh after one of those because you're like, oh, good. I was feeling sad. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a relief. Yeah, know? and then my my closer was, uh, and with the by the authority in, uh, invested in me by the link that Corey sent me. When, oh, when nice. I said that, I, that got a big pop. I was like, oh, this is just <laughs> amazing, and. <Butter>. Uh, <laughs> gravy and uh then oh, they uh, yeah i know i don't know what to do uh going? and then uh they kissed <laughs> that's that's how those end um but as it ended they had a path to the cocktail hour mm. and uh <laughs> yeah where you would have been and uh <laughs> shrimp there yep uh, and uh pretty good they had a path of the i so i walked the grandmother down so i was at the exit of the path into the cocktail hour it felt like a comedy club because everyone was funneling out and they all kept coming up to me shaking my hand going you were so funny that was great Whoa. we loved it you and i'm bookings, man i'm giving my card yeah <laughs> selling merch Thank and in the future <laughs> it was uh it was crazy yeah wow well, it sounds like it was a success you, you know you sound happy with the result and oh yeah i told you uh, i mean was it worth all that stress <laughs> i don't know i think so but it, it was a lot of stress for sure oh my uh, gosh but uh so we got to get into those uh emails here we got emails we got a message from live so uh let's do the email first and then we'll go to the dms Yes. I'm, well, you uh, read the email. I'll read the DM. I got it queued up. Perfect. Do the DM because I got to scroll for the oh, email. Okay. Well, the DM's pretty long. Uh, all right. So Liv Johnson wrote. She's a Patreon member. Um, she wrote, uh, at my job, I'm a manager, and now I took on the role of interviewing new people and hiring or declining. So far, I've done two interviews, hired one and not the other. Do you guys understand how intimidating interviewing people is when you have social anxiety? <laughs> my first one, I was so nervous. I kept mixing up my words uh, and almost let my panic show. I did get through them, so I'm proud of myself, but my God, it's so intimidating. Also working full-time, taking care of three kids. And in the process I'm, of moving, I'm so stressed. I'm so tired and so drained. And I have no downtime at all these days. It's like starting to affect my mental health. Any advice? Okay, so there's two parts. First, the interviewing. The second is being so stressed where you don't want to get a break. And uh, okay, so first of all, the interviewing. And I talked about it last week, how I interviewed people. And it is stressful because with social anxiety, you hate telling people no. You hate yes. disappointing people. Yeah. And you have to tell people no. <laughs> you can't hire everybody. Right, right. And you know, it. you decide if they make money or not. Yeah, you decide their livelihoods, but you also decide to live, uh, you know, decide if they're they're going to be a good fit because the hardest thing is firing somebody. Yes. It's way easier to be like, oh, we want somebody in a different direction. Chappelle has a great joke of where he talks about um, white people say things in a positive way in their tone of voice. Yeah. Even though it's negative, he, he goes, uh, like, if you don't get a job, that's usually bad, but he, he does like a white person person voice and he goes well we're gonna go with somebody else but we'll keep you around in the future and he goes 
Oh, that's good. <laughs> Even though it's bad news. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, super funny. Um, of course, it's his, one of his older jokes. Yeah, uh, but the, the uh, but I feel like telling somebody no in an interview is not the most disappointing thing. The most disappointing thing is getting fired from a job because it's, right. it's embarrassing to, you know, you have to get back on your feet and apply. But when you're interviewing, you're probably maybe already have a job or you, uh, or, uh, you're, you're playing a bunch of jobs at once. It's like dating. Like we talked about you yes. need a perfect fit for a company. Cause you want, you want somebody who gets along with everyone. So you don't have to fire them later. You know, like you want to make sure they mesh with everyone. There's chemistry. They're, they're, they're not psycho. Right. <laughs> it is like dating and interviewing is very similar, except, you know, you don't usually get drinks, but maybe you do. Well, uh, the Seinfeld joke, uh, dating is a job interview that goes all night. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I never heard that one, but I could see yeah. it. Dating's a job interview. <laughs> goes all night goes all night he doesn't sing it <laughs> uh, oh, yes, uh, or no. yes or no and uh, as far as uh, not being able to get a break I think Liv just try to like we constantly say uh, radical acceptance focus on what you can control so if I like you can't control how many interviews are going to be brought into you and all the things that are your workload. But when you get home, maybe set 20 minutes aside. That's just for you or she's got those kids. I know maybe put them to bed at once. And then yeah, time you do need that. You do need unwinding time for sure. Yeah. I know that it's hard, but even just a half hour to 45 minutes, if you can do it. Yeah. Right. Right. Just veg out. Um, try to not look at a screen i don't yeah. know read a book or something but yeah I, I used to have her life where uh i would work i i worked like this hard job where i got done and and uh i also had a hard comedy job where i had to say free comedy show for four hours <laughs> so i worked like one huge job and then i had to come and do a free comedy show and, and perform and stuff and then i always got home super late and i slept like six hours and i was talking to my mom and i'm like man, I can't even think I, I'm at work. I'm like, I can't focus at work and I, I'm not being able to write jokes. And she's like, yeah, you have no time to, to rest. You're exhausted. <laughs> You're literally just going through the motions. You're so right. tired. And I'm like, I know. So then I got the other job and now I'm, uh, I, I was able to like, finally like have time to myself and, and yeah, my, ment- my productivity went up from yeah. being able to rest my brain. So I know, uh, your job is good, but I don't know. Uh, maybe it's worth spending some money to put your kids and some vacation or something. I don't know. Send your kids to like a daycare center and chill. Right. Out. I don't know. <laughs> Give them drop off. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know, but drop off at a friend's house and, and order them pizza and then just sit in your car. <laughs> or something. <I> don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, but the interviewing thing, well, I want to worry about telling those people no, because they're going to get another job. Don't worry about them. Yes. And uh, the worst is the follow ups. You know, I, I said on the one episode of people would I would interview people that my boss didn't want. And the, the, some of them would call the office and be like, can I speak to Andrew about the job? I, I want to see if I got it. And I had to be like, I just ignored them. But <laughs> <laughs> so live, don't just don't be like Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> and tell them no, so they move on. <laughs> um, speaking of uh, hiring and jobs, I got to give a shout out to Matt Moves Mountains because uh, he brought it to our. You're a little frozen on my end. Yes, uh, it, I'm back. Okay. Uh, he uh, one of the topics he brought in recently was that he was down for a job and didn't know what was going on and had the interview thought it went all right, but wasn't sure. And, uh, he wrote to us, uh, it's been a while one. They gave that job to someone else in a quote unquote difficult decision. Okay. And then while he was spiraling for a week or so, he got a call from them saying the position is available and he got it. Oh my God. Yeah. 
um, I'm sorry, you cut out the beginning. Who wrote this? Matt Moves Mountains. Oh yeah, yeah. He talked to me. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's a good. Uh, it's a good conclusion to this. Um, to his whole life. If you listen to the past two years. Yeah. We've seen him get fired from his old job. I forgot what that was. He yeah, got, got into uh, hacking mainframes and uh, making keeping your job. <laughs> yeah, he's in, he was into like he taught himself how to program. I think he went to school, and now he's finally like it's so hard to get a job with no experience. And he, yeah, he was able to get his foot in the door. Now it's going to be all cruise control for him. Yeah, he's got the experience and he's got the skills. It's going to be great. He's got the control alt delete. Uh, yeah, he's got, yeah, right. That's what I use. That's my hacking is, uh, opening up task manager and closing a program that's not responding. Yeah. Man moves mountains is now the paperclip. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, and now the, uh, for that email, uh, shout out to, and we'll do it in the intro, but shout out to latest Patreon, uh, member Avelina Mendoza, she wrote to us, "Hi guys, this is my first uh, topic in the podcast. I went to I want to talk about uh, the anxiety you get when you finally catch up on your favorite podcast just in time to hear that one that one of the hosts is actually in your area performing the very next day. Oh so you, <laughs> my god! So you try to contact everyone. Oh my you- god! I was hoping you say I, I was hoping you saw that." Did you yeah. see that one? Did you see that one um, while you were in LA? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, never mind. Yeah, we talked about it. Um, but yes, uh, there's more. Uh, uh, so finally, they're performing in your uh, area the very next day. So you try to contact everyone you know to see if anyone can go. And sure enough, everyone is busy. No. So you- so you spend the next 24 hours fighting with yourself because you really want to go, but are completely anxious about going by yourself because you know there will be uh, there will be all the people. All jokes aside, I ended up go- going even though I found every excuse not to. I have a hard time going to unfamiliar places by myself. I'm glad I went. I, I relate to this so hard. Same. Uh, I... Uh, I had a hard time going to unfamiliar places by myself. I'm glad I went. I got to meet Steven Rogers, and that was really cool. I literally almost uh, left before you got there, Steven, because I spilled my chai tea latte all over myself. Was (laughs) (laughs) was totally off to a great start. (laughs) Wow. Well, I got to say, I met Evelina in in, uh, L.A., couldn't be nicer. She's such an awesome person. And it meant so much to me that she was there. And I, in hindsight, I did see her light up when I walked in to the showroom. Oh, so cool. And I thought it was just us being like, hey, there you are. But now knowing how much stress she went through uh, just to see me, it means a lot. And uh, I, I got to say, she did not show it. She w- was just awesome to talk to it was really cool getting to know her and it was a lot of fun yeah with anxiety the anticipation is the hardest part and oh yeah there, and it gets a lot easier <laughs> i mean i've circled blocks i've waiting till more people showed up that i might know it's or you know i i do not like going places that i don't know well by myself so i yeah. can't agree more luckily it's ticketed event so all you do is show up so you show your ticket yeah, a seat or just stand around waiting for uh, Steven to come in. Yeah, I'm I'm proud of you, uh, Evelina. That was that took took a lot of guts. I don't honestly that would have been hard for me to do. So <laughs> you gave uh, you gave me the advice today. That that was pretty great for sure. Yeah, man. Uh, do you got anything for that? Uh, no, I'm just happy for her. And uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, the, the chai latte I, I relate to. <laughs> oh, and I don't know if you know this, but there's like a big scandal going on with Joe uh, about how I spilled Diet Coke on his jacket and I didn't tell him. What? Have you heard about this? No. <laughs> the, uh, I'm sure I'll hear all about it tomorrow or when I see him. Yeah, yeah. Are you coming back tomorrow? I'm coming back tomorrow, but I don't know when I'll be back. And oh I... I'm on mom duty, so I wouldn't have been able to. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. 
the uh, you got to relieve your mom. Yes, so you, I'm. I'm gonna relieve the cat mom. I'm relieving my mom, but then I'm gonna take her out for uh, all for Mother's Day and all the stuff she did for us. So. Oh, awesome! Is yeah. Day, when is Mother's Day? Um, May eighth. Oh wow! So you gotta you gotta order your DoorDash cake. <laughs> yeah, I know. Gotta make him drive a long ways. Um. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, you spilled Diet Coke on him. Yeah, his... yeah. On the live Tuesdays, you know, I'm like, like I talked about it before, but I didn't really understand. I thought I was going to do what you did and do stand up and then just do a quick thing and then sit down. And then while I'm like sitting around before the show starts, I find out that I have to be there the whole time for an hour and a half with them or whatever. And I, and I, and I'm like super nervous. I get like a diet Coke and I ask the whole table, like, Hey, what do you want? And everyone's like starting yelling the orders, you know, Norman wants a beer and somebody wants a water and all this stuff. And I, I, so I end up going from the bar to the table where everyone's sitting with all these drinks and uh no tray you know and i'm nervous about having to to do something i didn't expect so i'm like putting like you know i'm trying to like get everyone's stuff all to, to everybody and of course like everything's slippery it's all condens condensation yeah so like i'm putting one thing on the table and my diet coke tilts and spills on a jacket i don't i don't even know whose it is and i'm like oh thank god it was a diet coke and not the beer in my head because uh, the beer smells and it's sticky. Diet Coke, at least I've spilled it on myself a million times. It's chemicals and water. It's just going to go it's away. It's sticky, though. No, real Coke is sticky. Oh, that's what the diet is. Unsticky. <laughs> yeah, right. Real Coke is sticky. And you want to clean that up because ants will come because it's sugar. <laughs> diet Coke, uh, I don't even know what they put in that. but So, uh, so I give everyone the drink. And then um, the show's about to start. And we're about to go on and Joe comes over and he's like, what happened here? And uh, Norman goes, he's building on you. <laughs> Norman like rats me out. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, sorry, it's going to evaporate. I, I don't even know it's your code. I don't know. It wasn't beer. So we go, you know, then he calls me out on, on, uh, on I think the live show. And I go, I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. And then I t he talks about it on the podcast, I, I guess, his podcast. To, she told me he gets 100,000 downloads an episode. Jeez. That's a lot, huh? It's crazy. 100,000 downloads. That's uh, how much uh, Louie donated during the uh, special. That's how much he wanted to donate. <laughs> <laughs> so then he uh, uh, he talked about it on his podcast. So then he, and then on the next episode, so we're at, at the diner and he goes, uh, after Monday, he goes. Uh, I talked about how you spilled a Coke on my uh, on my coat. Chris Allen texted me, who we know, and he goes, "Oh, Andrew spilled uh, soda on your coat. Didn't tell you? That's a bad dude, man. You don't want to be involved in him." <laughs> <laughs> like he was completely serious. Chris Allen told Joe not to talk to me ever again. That's so crazy. Go, I go, well, is it stained? If it's stained, I'll, I'll dry clean it. I, I don't think it was going to stain. And he goes, no, no stain. And I go, okay, so it's fine. <laughs> but then he talked about on his podcast how Chris Allen told me never told him. Oh. So I keep getting buried on this podcast. 100,000 people listen to, which I don't even know. Every episode, they bury me. I look like a freak. <laughs> I'm like, oh you're, my God. you're being destroyed on there. I'm like, yeah, I'm like in an avalanche. <laughs> keeps coming. Chris Allen sold me out. It's pretty hilarious. <laughs> uh, I have to unplug. All right. Well, we're almost done, right? Yeah. Are we, are we an hour? Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I don't want it to die. Uh, but uh, we got to wrap it up. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, for for listening uh if you're here for from the coke uh <laughs> coke conspiracy <laughs> it, it, it evaporated on youtube we're asking when we're watching it live what's up the update with the coke <laughs> <laughs> but uh thank you everybody uh for listening uh check out the patreon 
four bonus episodes a month for just five bucks. They're a lot of fun. Check them out. Some new sketches on there that uh, are getting a lot of praise. Oh, and yeah, we, uh, we play them at the end of the Patreons. So yeah. All and original material. All original material. Uh, this we should have had writers, but <laughs> <laughs> all original sketches. Uh, this week, my album comes out uh, on May 6th. I'm going to try to do the premiere like uh, Joe did. going to get that uh, feedback and set something up. But we'll the, uh, him, yeah. please uh, check it out and share it, everybody. And uh, anything you want to plug, uh, Andrew? No, no. Well, I said uh, I'd be in Denver July 21st. I messed that up. It's July 11th and 12th, everybody. July right. 11th and 12th. Denver Improv. Check me in and my woman out. Beautiful. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening, and we'll see you next time. See everything. Thanks for the birthday wishes. <laughs>